this book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith and not by sight. Let's say it together. We walk by faith and not by sight. This is the Word of God. This is not... This is not the church telling you to. This is the Lord telling you to walk by faith from here to there, where you are right now, to the next place you're going, to tomorrow. Walk by faith and not by sight. Every movement you make, everything you do, you do it walking by faith and not by sight. Romans chapter 1 verse 17. The just shall live by faith. We walk by faith. We live by faith. We have to. I want to say that again. We have to. We have to walk by faith. We have to live by faith. Somebody say amen. amen. How does that faith come? Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Oh, I know you're going to say it with me again. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. The only place I can get faith is from the Word of God. Amen. The only place, the only place I can get faith is by the Word of God. The enemy, the enemy of my soul that comes to steal, kill, and destroy, he knows how much Word I read. He knows how much time I spend in the Word. He basically knows by that time and what I do how much faith I have. Sometimes we don't even know how much faith we have because we're not keeping up with the fact that the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Why is it like this? What is it for? Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. We have a kind of faith that they did not have in the Old Testament. We've got a faith that they didn't have in the Old Testament because our faith comes from the gospel and the good news. I'm just going to wait for you to quit shouting. I'm going to wait. You have more faith than even Abraham had because Abraham had a measure of the good news. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, Abraham rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and that gave him some faith, amen. But you can have more faith in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob than Moses. You can have more faith in anybody in the Bible because you have the faith from the good news. And Jesus is the good news. A better covenant established on better promises produces the faith of the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the author and the finisher or the perfecter of our faith. When we read the word of God, he is perfecting our faith. You don't even have to perfect it. He does it. Give God a crazy, crazy. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't live by money. You don't live by food. You live by faith. You walk by faith. Hallelujah. You may not have enough money. You may not have enough food. But if you've got enough faith, you'll have enough of everything else. Somebody shout amen. So Jesus is the author and the finisher of my faith. And because he is, he knows what faith is for. He knows what faith can do. He knows how we're supposed to use it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 2 says, By faith the elders obtained a good report. So a good report is what faith is going to give you. A good report is you're not a sinner no more. A good report is you're not living in the darkness no more. A good report, you're not in the, your past anymore. A good report is you're not going to be sick anymore. By his stripes, we were healed. Somebody shout amen. amen. You've got a good report because by faith, we obtain, we obtain a good report. Amen. 
Just like I said about Bob's mama. He got a call, got a bad report, drove all the way to Indiana, expecting this week to have a funeral for his mama. And now his mama's back home doing just great. And they're not having a funeral for mama. They're praising God for raising mama up. When the hospice tells you to go home, you got a miracle. Anybody want to shout? Anybody want to dance? Anybody want to spin around? Anybody want to give God? Woo! I was just thinking when I did that, I'd like to see Jody spin around like that. Glory to God. Everybody'd have to move out of the way because that tummy would knock somebody down. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please God. No matter what we do, even if we give, if we don't give by faith, we're not pleasing God. Even when we praise, if we don't praise in faith, in fact, praise protects our faith. We're showing God that I love my faith. I want to live by faith, so I'm going to praise you anyhow. I'm going to thank you anyhow. I'm going to rejoice anyhow. I'm going to show you how much I love living by faith, how much I believe in living by faith. I'm going to praise you, right? Praise protects your faith, don't it? I'm going to say that one more again. Praise will protect your faith. Glory to God. Being thankful will protect well, I don't have nothing to be thankful about. Yes, you do. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ paid the price. It's done. It's finished. It's yours. Thanks be unto God that gives us the... Somebody say amen. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. And we must believe. Hallelujah. Without faith it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God, he that comes to God, must believe that he is and that he pays wages to those that diligently seek him. Give God a crazy praise. That word reward means to pay you a wage. To bless everything you touch is the wage. To bless everywhere you go is the wage. To bless you coming in and going out is the wages that he pays. To wash you in the blood is the wages that he pays. To heal your sicknesses and diseases is the wages that he pays. Come on. All the wages of sin was death, but now I get a wage from all my to God. Woo. Somebody shout amen. amen. Stay with me now just for a few more minutes. I got to Harry. Glory to God. Mark eleven twenty two. 22. If you've been here, have faith in God. Say it with me. Have faith in God. That's where faith starts out. It starts out in God. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Hallelujah. We have faith in God. Number two, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. My speech and my preaching is not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That your faith will not stand in the wisdom of a man, but in the power Our faith is not in how it's preached. Our faith it is how it works. For faith without works is dead. Somebody say amen. So my faith is in God. My faith is in the power of God. In the energy of God. In the working of God. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? To us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead. And set him at his own right hand. Far above all power and principality. And dominion and might. And above every name that is name not only in this world but that which is to yeah. Romans chapter 3 verse 25 my faith is in God my faith is in the power of God my faith is in the blood the blood the blood the blood 
Oh, it reaches to the, somebody help me. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. It's the blood that gives me strength from day to day. It'll never lose its power. Oh, the blood of Jesus that washes white as snow. Somebody help me. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there. 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 there. By faith, I received my sight. Somebody give God a crazy praise. Somebody shout with me. It was there. Give God another praise. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. Amen. Faith in the blood. Faith in the power of God. Faith in the blood of Jesus. I see a crimson stream of blood. It flows from Calvary. And its waves, which reach the throne of God, have been sweeping over me. Let me do it. I plead the blood over your immune system. I plead the blood over your brain. I plead the blood over your eyes. I plead the blood over your face, your head, your nerves your joints, your bones. I plead the blood over your heart. I plead the blood over your kidneys, over your liver, over your pancreas, over your intestines. I plead the blood over your lungs. That heaviness got to come out of them lungs. I plead the blood from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I plead the blood on your skin right now. That eczema's got to go. That skin cancer's got to go. That psoriasis has got to go. Those tumors have got to go. I plead the blood over your body. By the stripes, we were healed. Somebody give God a crazy praise. We put our faith in the blood. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Ephesians 16, faith is not a muscle. Faith is not an organism. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith is something that you say. Faith is something that you do. Faith is an action. Somebody help me. Listen carefully to the book of Ephesians chapter 6. Stay with me just a few more minutes. Verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able. That word able there is also the same word for powerful. That you may be powerful to stand against the wiles, schemes, tactics of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take... Take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day having done all to stand, stand. Stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, listen carefully. Above all. Mm. Above everything else, above everything that you have, above or over all, as the Amplified says, over all those pieces, over yourself, over your hands, over your feet, over your head, over your mouth, over your body, over your thinking. Faith has got to be a shield that is over everything in your life. In fact, Jesus is not Lord over it until your faith is over it. Yeah. 
Jesus is not Lord over it unless your shield of faith is over it. Amen. Your shield of faith is what says, I believe the Lord is over my life. I believe the Lord is over my situation. I believe he's Lord over all. And that's above all taking the shield of faith. Taking the shield of faith that you shall be able to quench all. Every one of them. Not just some of them. Every one of them. Some are aimed at your head. Some are aimed at your body. Some are aimed at your thinking. Some are aimed at your emotions. Some are aimed at your skin, your body, your heart, your liver, your lungs. Sickness and disease is a fiery missile from the devil. Hallelujah. But your shield of faith covers it all. That thought that he wants to get into your thinking, no, he can't because I've got my shield of faith over all, which means Jesus is Lord over all. Jesus is not Lord over all unless my shield of faith is over all. Anybody love me? Hallelujah. That's my shield of faith to quench. Those darts are going to hit my feet that are going to cause me to go somewhere that I don't need to go. Hit my hands, cause me to handle something I don't need to handle. Hit my mouth, cause me to say something I don't need to say. Hit my emotions, cause me to feel something that I shouldn't feel. Hit my thinking, cause me to think something I shouldn't think. But if I've got Lord over all, I've got my shield of faith over all, and I will quench all. Oh, oh, oh. The main reason why people lose the battle is because they underestimate. Mm. They underestimate the battle and they don't realize that they've got to lift up a shield of faith in battle. The only reason why we ever lose as Christians is because we didn't have our shield of faith over it. The only reason why we would have failure in battle, the only reason why we would lose a battle is that we didn't have our shield of faith over that particular thing. Lord over all is the shield of faith over all. The only reason why we would lose in any part of our lives is because the shield of faith did not stop that dart there, did not stop that missile there. We underestimate it. We think that the world is for pleasure. All the world now is in the world and living in pleasure and don't know that the world is a battlefield, not a playground. We're trying to play in a battlefield and you can't play in a battlefield. You've got to lift up a shield of faith. Somebody say amen. It's a battlefield and where we don't have the shield of faith is exactly where the enemy is going to hit the most. Are you listening to me? So if I think God's using the devil, I won't even have a shield of faith up. If I think God is testing me with sickness, I won't have a shield of faith up because I believe God sent it. But I've got to get all that stupidity out of my mind. Faith comes by hearing, not what somebody tells me they think the word says, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? The word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Say with me, the word of God. Not the word of man, not the word of a denomination, but the word of God. Hallelujah. Well, God's trying to teach me something. No, he's not. He sent the Holy Spirit to teach you all things. He said, and when he has come, he will teach you how much? All things. In fact, I need to get something out where I can just take A-L-L and search it through the Bible. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. I will quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Come on, all, all, all. Doesn't, I mean, it means everything. 
He will guide me into all truth. He will teach me all things. Try it with me. He will teach me all One more time. He will teach me all. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. You just sang about the victory. Above all, taking the shield of faith, which you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked. Verse number 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Give God a crazy praise. Are you listening to me? It's not a playground, it's a battlefield. Say it again. It's not a playground, it's a battlefield. People are casualties of a battle that they just simply did not raise up a shield of faith. People that are Christians are defeated by one thing. They just did not put a shield of faith over that part. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Turn with me in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Faith is where our victory lies in. Faith is the victory that comes, uh, hallelujah, over everything that happens. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Everything that is in this world can be overcome by faith. Everything that the devil does can be, uh, be overcome by faith. You are the only person, you are the only person that determines the size of your shield of faith. You are the one person that decides how much faith you have, not God. You are the one person that has to lift up the shield of faith and put it over everything in your life. You've got to do it. It doesn't say God lifts up the shield of faith over you. It says you've got to pick up your shield of faith. And where you don't have it, that's where the enemy will eventually attack. It will overcome every fiery dart. It will overcome everything in this world. Anybody want to give God a crazy praise? No matter what it is. No matter what it is, your shield of faith will overcome it and give you the victory. Because it is not a playground, it is a battleground. Come on. Stay with me just a few more seconds. Hallelujah. Turn with me in your Bibles to Jude chapter 1 verse 3. Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you, exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith that was delivered. Mm. That was delivered unto the saints. It's been delivered. It's here. It's yours. All you've got to do is put it over everything you care about. You've got to start with yourself. Every night, every night, I spend till the next morning, it, without fail, without fail. If it's Sunday night tonight, I will be doing it in the morning without fail. I've been doing it now for, for all of this year. I intercede over you for the coming day. And I put the blood of Jesus over you. And I say, Father, let them be in agreement with me. Because when any two of us agree as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done. You are a part of my responsibility in the Lord. Amen. Come on. I'm not responsible for people that go to another church. I'm responsible for people here at this church. Amen to put the blood over you, to be in agreement with your victory, to be in agreement with faith, to keep a shield of faith over you, to keep the blood of Jesus over you. And I can say before Almighty God, it's done every day. But you've got to pick up that shield of faith too. 
You got to pick it up so that the enemy won't hit your hands and you do something wrong with them. That you can quench every dart that's aimed at your feet so you won't walk the wrong direction. So that it will not hit your emotions so that you will get crazy in your emotions. It will not hit your thinking so that you'll not get crazy in your thoughts. God has not given you a spirit of fear but of power and love and a sound mind. Come on. You love me? A spirit of power and love and a sound mind. You, you're not going to lose your mind. Quit thinking you're going to lose your mind. Quit worrying about dementia. Quit worrying about falling apart. You've got a sword, I mean a shield up there. It will quench every fiery dart of the wicked. Somebody say amen. I'm almost through. Stay with me just a few more minutes. Luke 22. Jesus is not praying for you to get saved. He paid the price for you to get saved. He's not praying for you to get healed. He's already paid the price for you to get healed. He's not praying for your deliverance. He's already brought deliverance. He's not praying for your family to get saved. He's offering them to be saved. All they got to do is accept it. He's not praying for people to get saved or healed or delivered or set free because he's already paid the price for it. It's now a choice. Yeah. Don't get mad at me. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Oh, pastor, believe for my kid. Believe for this. No, they need to believe. They need to believe. Me believing for them ain't going to do it. They got to believe for themselves. If their actions are choosing wrong, they are going to have recompense. So what is Jesus praying? Listen to this scripture. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as sweet. Next verse. But I'm praying for you that your faith fail you not. So what is Jesus praying for? For your faith. He gave you something to win with. He gave you something to destroy the work of the devil with. He's praying for you that your faith fail, fail, fail. Say fail. There's two meanings for it in the Greek. Number one, that it ceases. I'm praying for you that your faith won't stop. Second meaning, I'm praying for you that you, uh, your faith, you will uh, not stop using it. You will cease using it. He said, I'm praying for you that when that thing happens, when that thing comes, you won't stop using your faith. You'll just say, I, uh, you'll get crazy. You'll get wild. You'll get emotional. You'll say, listen to me. This is exactly what you'll say. Listen to me. Can I, let me have a shield. My God, this is a good shield. All of a sudden, something goes crazy with your kids and they call you on the phone. And if you're not careful, you will lay down your shield of faith. And the Lord's praying for you that you won't lay down your shield. He's praying for them that they won't lay down that shield. But they laid it down a long time ago. And that's the thing he's praying for. Is anybody listening to me? He's praying that your faith won't fail you or that you won't lay it down. If you keep it up, this thing will turn around. The enemy knows he can already work in that area. I'm going to say that if you're a repeat customer, listen to me very carefully. Two men are in a boat, Pete and repeat. Pete falls out of the boat into the water. Who's left? Two buys are in the boat. Y'all love me? Listen carefully. I'm going to close. The Syrian army came to attack Hezekiah. When they got to Hezekiah and the, the children of Israel in Jerusalem, Rabshaketh comes out and he says, if you'll pay us off, we'll leave. 
so Hezekiah goes into the temple and he takes all the gold from outside the temple and gives it to Shenekah, gives it to Rebshaketh, his emissary, and they leave. And about a year later, they come back again. And when they come back again, Rabshake says, don't you people trust Hezekiah because it was him that went into the temple and took the gold out and gave it to me. The first time the devil comes, he's trying to get enough information and enough stuff on you so that he can come back the second time and use what he did the first time to really get you the second time. And he only comes the first time to get enough stuff because he's stripped, he's spoiled, he ain't got nothing to work with, so he comes the first time hoping you'll give him something to work with, a fear, a worry, a doubt. You'll lay your shield down so that he'll have something to come back the second time and take everything you got if you can. Because it's hard to trust God the second time the enemy comes if you gave him ground the first time. Give the Lord a praise right now. Come on, give him a big praise. Because some of us, he came to us when we were kids. Some of us, he came to us when we were teenagers. Some of us, he came to us at different places. And he got enough then before you learned about your shield of faith that he thinks he can come back now. And he's hoping you'll just not pick up that shield of faith. Because once you pick it up, over all, over your whole person, over everything, the shield of faith is not over all unless Jesus is Lord. The shield of faith is over all. If Jesus is Lord over all. Amen. Let's love on the Lord a little bit. Hallelujah. 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 How do I lift up the shield of faith? The shield of faith are the words of faith that you speak over yourself. You speak them now. Just like I'm speaking over you. You may be 15. But I'm speaking it over you. Or 16. You may be 89. You may be 105. But we're speaking it over you. You need to speak it over yourself. Because it's called the unity of faith. And the shield of faith in Greek is called theros. And it is a shield that on the ends of it, the sides have connecting, connectors. So the shield of faith that I would lift up over you and you would lift over you will connect. It will connect. It will connect. And then when you get in agreement with the word, it connects. My faith and your faith. And that way, no matter how the enemy comes, we've got the unity of the faith because we have a bond of peace. You can't have unity of faith unless you first have a bond of peace. Hallelujah. Let's stand together, would you? Oh, my God.